Hey guys, here we are back on Wind Chaser, back in our T9450. Uh, uh, the other one's sitting over there. Uh, back on the server, a couple of guys uh, finished up plowing some of the fields, so now here we are on our uh, field two. Uh, we leased this field, but the, the beans here, you know, the, this field is complete crap. You can see the nutrients there. That's why we're plowing in these beans. We first sprayed with the uh, NPK. So we're plowing in the NPK. In addition to the NPK, we're plowing in the soybean crop that uh, isn't even worth our time to harvest. Uh, moisture is good. Uh, we've got five, five o'clock in the morning here. I think they were plowing until uh, last time I played, I was in 17. I was probably right around 11 o'clock at night is when game time is when I was uh, done playing so looks like they gave us a nice headland and everything and So no one's on mine right now, so yeah, it's just had the lights on and cabin light and joined the suspension cabin. And, um, add a little bit more terrain to this field before it was just a little bit boring, so I kind of like made it a little bit more um, I guess a little bit different kind of terrain, undulating terrain. I guess make their suspension in uh, 27 20 flex and our wheels flex. And just make everything work. I wasn't sure if this uh, T9 450 would pull uh, 11 shank ripper, but it seems to be doing it just fine. Um, not as fast as like the, uh, um, the big tractors pull it at, but definitely uh, a lot quicker than the uh, 870 Ecolo Tiger. So, Oop. covering a little bit of I think we're plowing at eight and a half meters, and the other one was five and a half. So gain three meters per, per pass here, so basically over, you know, we basically picked up a third of Colo Tiger when we have both of these in the field, so. Added trees on this side uh, in power lines and paved road quite, quite some time ago, but it really dresses it up over here. And then this field, uh, field one up ahead of me also made that a little bit more rough terrain, so it's not so flat and boring. Um, I haven't really been playing this much. I, I, last time I played was probably over a week ago. If, if, if not more, it was the last time I did the video and then time for that. So. kind of been really busy and not really interested in FS lately. I haven't really used Blender in probably a month at least. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm just getting kind of burnt out and just busy with other things not related to video games. So. that always happens. I always get like really into it for a couple months and then I kind of lose interest for a couple months and then I get back into it. So it's just kind of a phase thing I guess. But I don't know. You guys on the server uh, hop on here once in a while. It's kind of boring right now just because we have so much tillage to do that no, I don't think anyone really wants to do it. But we got our uh, the biggest, biggest uh, uh, primary tillage that uh, 
deer makes the 27, 20, 27 and a half foot. Uh, that uh, 27, 20, 27, 30 is 26 and a half feet or something. It's like a foot uh, narrower than this, but it's definitely a lot more aggressive. Two inch tool has more weight, weight, weight down force on it. Of course, the case, the big case, 13 shank, that's also 26 foot. Uh, Kraus Dominator, the biggest one I think was 21 foot, same with the uh, land bubble and stuff like that. So, uh, we're definitely covering as much ground as we can. Uh, we're just making stripes, skipping a lane so the other tractor can finish it up. And it just makes turning a little bit easier. I mean, you, you don't have to because this 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 implement's wide enough for accurate and the turning radius so that the articulation is is tight enough where I don't actually have to skip a row. Whereas that small Ecolo, you know, you're working you had um, essentially six meters less that you had to turn with, so you have the one lane that you're working with and the other one, so. Kind of actually turn. You had to actually skip up, skip away, and just because the implement wasn't wide enough to allow you to turn inside that. Because people are asking, like, why do you skip, skip lanes and stuff like that? It's just for turning efficiency. You know, if your implement's big enough where your turning radius, your tractor can fit inside of it, so you don't have to skip. But if it's not wide enough, you have to skip. Uh, so it'll be going forward and backward and reverse and you have to turn a take a really wide arc turn like uh, go out and then come back in kind of thing I don't know I thought it was kind of obvious why like people skip rows with their implements but I guess it's not that obvious uh, I also started playing I think it was Friday. I just downloaded um, and started playing World of uh, Warships, and it's actually pretty fun. Like at first, I'm like, this is kind of boring, but after a while, you start to, uh, you know, some of the scenarios and some of the battles they can get pretty intense, and like you start really kind of. Um, it's like a, uh, a game of chess, but it's interactive and dynamic and always changing. You're always trying to guess the next player's move. And um, the only thing is, um, I'm not really familiar with it, so I don't know if you can like group up with like some friends and stuff. And like, so you're always doing. Because back in college, you know, for four years ago or whenever it was when I was playing, I was playing, um, uh, what was, uh, what was it? Star Wars, The Old Republic, it came out, like, I think it was my senior year in college or something, and I was playing that with my roommate, and we, we would, uh, like, uh, join up on the same team with, like, random people, and we'd always do, like, uh, ranked battles together and stuff, but... I don't know if this world of planes, tanks, battleships, if you can like uh, make a, like a team and always do co-ops together and stuff, or uh, always play on the same kind of like map. But that'd be cool. Get in team speak and coordinate your plan of attack. Um, I also like. Unlike the Star Wars, that like, massive multiplayer online, whatever, MMO game, where, like, your character, it always leveled up to, like, level 50, and then, so, like, a, you would always be just whomping on, uh, you'd always keep building that same character, where, like, this is, you can get all the experience in the world with one ship, but, like, your other ship, you can't advance it to the next one, because you have no experience in that ship so in order to advance in like a class you have to like keep using that ship so like if you have an aircraft carrier you need to keep using the aircraft carrier to get your experience points 
to like advance that aircraft you can't like do like f like the phoenix you know it's a really fun ship and i love using it um but you you can't transfer those experience points over to like uh, advance another ship so I like that it forces you to actually use all the the ships for a long time and develop it and so I like that they forced you to, to do that and it's not like um, when you get a, a new bigger faster stronger ship it's not like a, a less you know a less um, a lesser class ship can't take you down. It could definitely, like, there's still a fighting chance for the lower level. I say lower level, it's not really like levels. Yeah, there's levels, but like, um, it's all about class of ships and the firing range and speed and handling. So, where like in this old uh, Star Wars game, a level 50 player would just destroy a level 10 player. The level 10 player had no chance. Where like a level 50 player in this game versus a level 10 player, like the level 10 actually has the opportunity to, you know, if he's using like a cruiser in your uh, battleship, there's a really good chance that he can still take you down. Um, so I like that. Like it's pretty pretty even, um, regardless of your of your level and experience points. But at the same time, the more experience points, you the the, the more advantage you have because you're using better equipment, better artillery, faster ships, tighter turning radius, uh, faster uh, uh, um, um, like turret, swivel, just better hold, you know, so there's incentive to like always level up and get the next stuff, but at the same time, like even if you're a lower level, you still have a really good chance of being successful. Um, I just wish like the there was a little bit more ships um, involved. I think there's like maybe ten per side, which is a good number. But it would be great if you know if you up to like twelve or fifteen, just to because sometimes it gets um, really boring and you spend half the time driving around the map trying to figure out where everyone is. But, I don't know, I, I like, um, they're two very different games, like, Farm Sim has the ability to, like, you make modifications, it's so open to personalize however you want, like, this map, you can build a map, you can build trees, you can change your crop textures, you can change your ground textures, you can change the sky, you can change, literally everything you can change and edit to your personal preference. Where like this other one, it's not it's not a game that you mod. You can like use like in-game modifications, but it's more like a um, basically like a just a real-time kind of simulation, but it's also a strategy. Um, it's a bit, it's very different than this, but it's still fun. I, I don't really know what it is that makes it so appealing right now, but it's I'm definitely enjoying uh, playing it. The graphics are pretty great too. So, um, going back to some farming simulator, um, I'm sure you all have, if not will, see pictures or like the update that, uh, Giants has teamed up with Aiko for like Master Ferguson and like Challenger and stuff like that. Um, and they released pictures of some in game tractors, Massey Ferguson and like uh, Volt, some kind of weird brand that I'm not familiar with. Um, you know, a lot of people are like excited about this, but I, I wouldn't be so. Um, quick to get excited about it you know people I think people are really excited that they teamed up with Challenger because people really want a nice Challenger tractor however what 
I think will be the case is um, they're, 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 it's probably just going to be Massey Ferguson tractors and then like a set of like like what Julian just did, Massey Ferguson combine, uh, Fed combine, Challenger combine. So people are expecting um, maybe like a uh, 765 series Challenger or like a 87. You know, I don't really expect that to be the case. Um, maybe it might be like a wheeled. Challenger tractor, uh, but I don't, I can't, I can't see Giants making uh, a tracked Challenger tractor, um, and I can't see them making any kind of like Rogator sprayers. Um, the one thing that I could see if they were, it would be like a European seven six five um, tractor because it's like I think that's Challenger's best selling tractor over in Europe. So, if there was going to be one, that would probably be it. But I just think it's going to be like a com combine pack with some Massey Ferguson and tractors and stuff like that. Um, just because they can pretty much reuse a lot of the modeling they, they have on existing tractors. They can reuse the wheels, just redo the, you know, the hood and cab and fenders. And, but... Um, I could, I could see it being a uh, maybe like a DLC, you know, for FS15, and then maybe in the next version they might put in more time and effort into it and, you know, develop some nicer models, but I would like to think that this is in a way to uh, kind of like answer this uh, competing companies cattle and crops um, screenshots and videos uh, because in the description like the YouTube video I watch I don't know if he's affiliated with cattle and crops or not but it seemed like you know like he has an insider source somehow because he's talking about confirmation and stuff like that but he he doesn't mention giants farms him directly but uh, indirectly he pretty much uh, tears a, a new one by uh, you know there's there's really no other farm simulator farming simulator um, games uh, that he really could be mentioning um, and, he, and he took he took uh, due diligence to mention that they uh, cattle and crops is about their customer and uh, their the consumer and the customers uh, voice and opinion, whereas um, I feel like Giants isn't really um, um, focusing on that as much as they could and should be. And then, I, I, in addition to that, he also mentioned when he was talking about the uh, weather, the rain, you know, he specifically mentioned soil mods, so. Um, with that being said, you know he's referring to this game, Farming Simulator by Giants. So. Um, you know, it doesn't take a rock scientist to put those two together. <sighs> now, with that video that I, I, I watched a little bit of that trailer video, and based on what I saw, it was like horrendous physics on the uh, wheels. I mean, they just literally were spinning, and spinning, and spinning, and spinning. You know, it's kind of like how this game was before drive control um, was um, put into the mods folder for, you know, four-wheel drive. So, although it was a pre-alpha, which is obviously before a beta release, uh, but hopefully they're, they, instead of focusing on, like, trees, like, and scenery and you know that's all great but you know I want to have to be you know when it comes to harvesting I want it to be like FS 13 with the MR engine where there was cleaning and threshing area and horsepower mattered and cleaning area and threshing loss was a, was a thing due to you know the, the size of the combine like I want there to be a reason to buy a big combine versus a small combine because 
In this game, the, the smallest, tiniest little combine, you can slap a 45 foot draper and it will harvest at the same speed with the same yield as like a CR1090 with the same header. There's absolutely no difference between buying a, a small combine versus big big combine besides the tank capacity and obviously like your torque ratios for acceleration and going up hills and stuff like that but like the amount of material you're cutting that it's actually like bringing in the harvesters bring in to, to clean and separate you know there's absolutely no difference between you know the combines in the game so I hope that the cattle and crops they look at that aspect of farming simulator because they're they're really suggesting that it's going to be a an actual true simulation experience like where you can actually learn about farming um, unlike farming simulator where the simulation pretty much ends at just driving the equipment and harvesting it doesn't really teach you much about farming really or like growing crops it's like okay you put the seed in the ground and it grows and you make you know cut it and sell it you know it's not very in-depth it's not a very good learning tool um, for the average person where it kind of seems like this new this new game is going to be more of an educational like um, really a true uh, simulation experience about the whole uh, soil management, the whole crop, uh, the whole harvesting. So I think that's really great because they're taking a more, it's not only more realistic, but it's definitely more educational. It's more, there's more value to that than just driving around in a tractor like I am. You know, without soil management, you know, this, what I'm doing now isn't even, there's no point to it in the base game. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's literally no point or benefit to tillage in farming simulator without soil one. Um, so, you know, I like to, I like to see any kind of farmer that says uh, you don't need to till or manage your your uh, crop residue after harvest and get 100% amazing yields. But uh, Giants really did leave a lot of opportunity, a lot of, they left a lot on the table for other companies to really kind of uh, fill those voids, you know, basically, whatever it is, I mean, take your pick, there's a lot of areas that you can improve. see that being incorporated into this this game anytime soon that kind of uh, um, focus that kind you know that, that that kind of direction I don't really see it this going that direction I think it is pretty much just going to be a uh, a driving kind of fun um, cartoony kind of game where maybe this competing company will actually uh, kind of focus on a more realistic uh, uh, simulating experience. I don't, I've never played the... I've only played FS13 and FS15. I've never played any any, any uh, game in, you know, versions before that, so I don't know how, how it was before. You know, but I can only imagine it's pretty much the same thing. Um, pretty much relying heavily on mods to make it more realistic. And I'm pretty sure back then it was the same. There's no point to tillage, and it was just uh, a game where you just drive around tractors and you do stuff. And you kind of see that being validated by the fact that they're making mobile it's on your mobile phone now it's on gaming consoles it's it's a very simplistic simulation um, and it's basically for the quick 
the uh, quick, uh, low attention span, quick, um, uh, fun, you know, not for someone like myself or others that spend a great deal of time to make it more, more realistic and more personalized and more uh, just the environment coming to life. You know, your map needs to come to life or, you know, the standard maps are uh, uh, horrendous, really. I mean, just uh, totally unrealistic. Um, a lot of the vehicles are, you know, the standard equipment, you know, who, who plows the field three meters at a time. And I don't know, I just... I don't, I don't see it ever changing, but hopefully this next, this next, uh, this next game is gonna fill and address a lot of the issues, fill a lot of those voids, address a lot of those issues, and and hopefully maybe make Giants reevaluate where they want to position position themselves and where they see uh, the game going, because it obviously has a lot of potential, a lot of potential that. I don't see uh, any kind of urgency to address on their behalf, but uh, this cattle and crops pretty much pinpointed a lot of issues I, I just talked about. The only issue is um, the physics, and hopefully they release more videos or more explanations or you know more information on the physics because. Um, you need to have the ability, there, there needs to be a reason to invest in larger harvesting equipment, you know, otherwise, what's the point? What's the point, like, why can't I, what's the point of using, you know, if I have a $200,000 combine, what's the point of buying a $400,000 combine when they do the exact same thing just as well, you know? Give me a reason besides just a lot larger tank capacity, you know? And that's really what I miss about soil management. If soil management, or, uh, yeah, soil management in the MR engine, if they incorporated more of the MR engine into the combines, that would be great because there would be an actual difference between the combines based on their threshing and cleaning area. There would be yield loss, but I, I they had to do, they had to incorporate more, more scripting into the standard scripts than they do now, but. There's definitely a possibility but I mean at what point is do you <laughs> I don't I don't know I, don't, I understand it's um, the game is built from modders to mod. That's great. I mean, I, I do enjoy it. I think we all enjoy it. Um, but at the same time, like the the entire the amount of Z Z Z mods I have in my mod folder. Um, if you look at my mods folder, it is literally. You know, I'll just do it right now, and then we'll. So if you look at my mods folder, I have a few mods, but the amount of like um, ZZZ mods I have to have just to make this game playable is, I mean, all of this, like bale extension, I mean, I don't really use soil mod, rental mod, map viable objects, finance mod, GPS, uh, multi fruit, um, random economics, real daylight, real terrain. Like these are all in the this one. This is that allows you to like you know, drive control, 
this, this should be like automatically incorporated via mouse control on all standard equipment. The ability to raise and lower your feeder house. That should be automatic. And then of course course play. Like this this is genius. Um, so I just it's it's crazy how much I need to actually have in my mods folder just to make this game playable. Anyways, back to soil management. You can see all of our NPK. We're at zero, 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 zero. Um, don't know if we can hear what we get. We got five, five and one. And then this will like spike once we uh, once the uh, soil mod updates. Because right now this is five and one. I think this is just based on tilling in the soybeans, really. I don't even think this is including the MPK that we plowed in, so it'll probably end up being around 8 and 4 or 9 and 4, somewhere around there. So we'll be pretty pretty well set once soil mod updates, but hopefully we can get all of our fields plowed. We have uh, field 1. 1, 13, 14, it's grass right there. Um, then that one, 25, 26, 27, 28, 44. And then we have like fields uh, 15. So we have a lot of tillage. We just have, we're working on field 2 right now. We did 3, I did, yeah, we did 3, 18, 17. Um, those are done, and then we just have just a little bit more to go. It's definitely, it took us three full days to spray all these fields with two sprayers, so it's going to take us probably four days to uh, get this all plowed in. But anyways, I'm going to call it a day here, so thanks for watching and listening.